station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? We are ready for the event. Copy that. JSC PAO, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Courtney Beasley with JSC PAO. How do you hear me? Hello, Courtney. We got you loud and clear. How us? I hear you loud and clear. It's good to see all of your smiling faces today. We'll be taking questions today through the phone bridge and on social media using the hashtag AskNASA. But before we begin taking questions, we'll hear some opening remarks from Tom Marshburn. Tom, take it away. Oh, sure. I tell you what, it's been a huge honor to be living and working aboard the International Space Station. We've all had uh, quite a bit of time with a lot of work to do over the last several months, working through Expedition 66 and 67, but we've had a lot of fun as well. Three spacewalks, robotic operations, lots of visiting vehicles, and of course the first private astronaut mission. Those uh, crewmates are with us on board right now. But uh, we do want to take a quick moment to thank the thousands of people, really, all around the world, mission control centers who have made this happen, the um, payload developers and the scientists who have had incredible ideas of how to utilize this laboratory and trying to squeeze all the information we can from this incredibly unique environment. So uh, we're excited to be here talking to you today, and we're ready to take your questions. All right, thanks, Tom. We'll begin taking questions now. Our first is from Jeff Faust with Space News. Good afternoon. Uh, I wanted to ask, you've had uh, the Axiom One private astronauts on the station for nearly a week now. What's it been like sharing the station with them, and have they been good house guests? It's been a really exciting week. Uh, we all know that we're part of uh, really an historic mission here, the first private astronauts. It's going to be opening up the, uh, the way for space for everyone, really. This is just that first step. Uh, they've also brought with them some incredible uh, hardware. We've been doing some internationally recognized science, uh, and they've been performing that as well. Uh, we've had a lot of fun showing them around, showing them how to live and work in the space station. They've been great crewmates. Uh, they've been uh, very kind and gracious with us as well. And so it's been a wonderful week. Our next question comes from social media. Matthias, this one's for you. What was your favorite research experiment you worked on? Well, I did lots of science experiments and um, like being a material scientist, um, I really enjoyed being up here and, and doing like, like yeah, almost a, a hundred different experiments or participate in these experiments. But if I can only select one, uh, then I would choose concrete hardening. It's an experiment which um, is interesting from a material science point of view because we gain a lot of data that we can use later on for simulations on the ground to uh, produce better materials, but it also has a lot of impact and relevance to like a, a, a very um, a hot topic that we have currently on our planet Earth. It's climate change. And climate change comes because we have a lot of CO2 production and uh, the worldwide concrete production uh, produces 7.3% of CO2. So if we can improve this process, reduce the CO2 emissions uh, due to concrete um, like yeah, mixing and, and all the building industry, then we actually have a massive contribution uh, against climate change. And so this is probably the experiment with the highest impact, I would hope. And our next question comes from Marsha Dunn with the Associated Press. Hi. Um Perhaps for Tom or anyone else who would like to uh, chime in, I wanted to also ask about the Axiom crew. I'm wondering, was it intrusive in any way having four guests move in to your home for a whole week? And any safety concerns? And now that you've experienced this, could just about anybody pull off something like that, flying into space and spending a week at the space station? Thank you. Hey, Marsha, yeah, so uh, they didn't come up with a minimum of training or with no training. So they actually spent a lot of time at JSC and doing a lot of the training that we do to be ready to do for emergencies and for off nominal situations. So I think we all felt pretty comfortable and they actually got the benefit of training with the people who are coming to replace us, the Crew 4 crew. And so the, not only did they train themselves, but they got to train with other NASA astronauts to sort of see how we work through problems and challenges. 
And so there's definitely uh, a difference in the amount of training and the, the experience, um, but we definitely feel that they are able to take care of themselves and get safely to their vehicle. And then we're able to implement that. And I don't think we found it intrusive. The station's a pretty big place. So it's about the size of a five bedroom house. I think, as, like Tom said, it's kind of actually cool for us to see. Uh, we take for granted how much we've adapted to being up here. So when you see new people come up there and remembering what it was like, uh, it's kind of like uh, when you see kids learning and stuff like that and, and having that sort of that joy and the wonder and, you know, teaching them how to control their bodies as they're moving around. So it's actually kind of fun um, to relive that. And it's actually really good practice for us uh, as we get ready to, to host crew four. I think in terms of anyone doing it, uh, I would say like Tom mentioned, this is definitely the dawn of a new era. So I think, you know, much like the early aviation industry early on, it was very few people that were doing it. And now it's pretty common for a person to get on an airplane and fly somewhere. So I think as we move forward, we'll have to figure out what the right amount of training is and what the right pace is. But yeah, uh, I think this is definitely the first step of, uh, of an era of, of privatizing commercial low earth orbit and making it accessible to a lot more people. And our next question comes from Bill Harwood with CBS News. Hey guys, Bill Harwood at the Kennedy Space Center. I'm gonna waste my question with a standard reporter question for crews coming home. I'd like each of you to tell us uh, what you're looking forward to the most uh, back on Earth after, after six months, five and a half months in space. Thanks. I think we're all really looking forward to seeing our loved ones, our family and friends on the ground who were so instrumental in supporting us throughout our lives and getting us to this point, and then of course supporting us while we've been up here. So I think first and foremost, that's probably all of our answers. And then of course, we're starting to think about all the different things we might want to eat and drink when we get home. So I think that's on our minds too. All right, and our next question. I'll just add a hot bath to that. I think we'd all like that. That does sound nice. Our next question comes from Robert Perlman with Collect Space. Hi, for Raja and Kayla, before you flew, you said that you were really excited about the turtle takeover of the space station, and you expected some references or decorations to appear during your stay. We all saw your zero-G indicator, FOW, but can you share other ways turtles have manifested aboard the space station? Yeah, it really has been a turtle takeover. Of course, we have FOW, our zero-G indicator. Uh, we've had some turtle t-shirts that we've worn. Um, and it's also been really fun to engage with our classmates who are on the ground. Uh, a lot of our classmates stay on CAPCOM or Capsule Communicator and Mission Control, so we get to actually talk to them on the loops for operational comm. Um, that's been really exciting. We had an all-turtle EVA, which was pretty great. Raj and I did a spacewalk together, which was really cool. Um, so we've had a lot of good turtle time and we are looking forward to welcoming Bob Hines and Jessica Watkins on crew four. So we'll have four turtles up here. Our next question comes from David Curley with Discovery Channel. Thank you very much, David Curley from Discovery. Kayla, uh, as a rookie, uh, several years wanting to be an astronaut, years training, can you give us a sense of expectations and reality of a long-term stay and a spacewalk. And Raj, like the stash, uh, can you talk about parachutes and the lagging force chute? Do you have any concerns on return? Thank you both. Yeah, I think for me, this mission has been such an incredible experience. And, you know, having three first time flyers on the crew, it's been really special to have this experience and especially to have Tom here as a mentor to kind of show us the ropes. And of course, we had Mark Vandehei with us for the majority of our mission, the second half of his year stay. And I have to say, we, we really feel like we're super well prepared by our training on the ground to experience this, but there's only so much you can prepare for. I think you can intellectualize the experience of living and working in microgravity, but until you experience it, you don't really know what it's gonna be like. Uh, the spacewalks were absolutely incredible. That was something I was really hoping I would get the chance to do. And we were super lucky because we all got the chance to do a spacewalk during this mission. Um, and that was kind of a crew goal. We didn't know if it would work out because of the scheduling, but we had a fantastic time out there doing some amazing work, looking down at our beautiful planet. And for us, I think that was a really, you know, kind of the ultimate experience to have together uh, and really 
valuable developmental for future missions and when we start to think about things like going back to the moon, doing a moonwalk, I think that's the best way we could have possibly prepared. Yeah, and th thanks for asking the question. So the uh, the mustache is a uh, tribute to General Olds. So there's an Air Force tradition called Mustache March that goes back to that era. Uh, unfortunately, I was doing spacewalks in March, so I couldn't grow a mustache and, and not uh, and interfere with the comm cap that... Uh, but I still owe the Air Force a few weeks, so I'm taking it into April. As far as the shoots, uh, so there's tons of people on the ground that, uh, that look at reviews, look at that data. Uh, one of the good things about having four shoots on a, on a system is that you can actually do just fine with three of them. So all the, the lagging shoots we've seen have been within the family of what they predict and within the models, and all the nut descent rates have been completely nominal. And so it's all well within the expected behavior. I mean, it, visually it looks uh, odd when you see it, but it's not totally unexpected. The, that shoot system is super complicated. Um, but we have total confidence in the system and, and more importantly in the people who are asking all those questions, looking at the data, the imagery, the models. And so, yeah, we're, we are feeling pretty confident and ready, to, ready and trustful of the system and ready to go home. Our next question comes from Zach with the Launchpad News. Yes, good morning, Space Station. Uh, back from Edmonton, Canada. Uh, Roger, Roger, Matias, and Kayla, this was your first space flight. Could you maybe each share something you found surprisingly easy to adapt to during your long duration stay? Maybe something that was challenging and how you overcame that. Thank you so much. Well, it's like the first days up here. Everyone needs to adapt to uh, the environment that every everything is three-dimensional. The room is three-dimensional. So even if you put something on the wall and you think like, okay, I know where it is, it's like you move in space and then you look at it from a different perspective and suddenly it seems like you lost something. So that was the, 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 the biggest, let me say, the, the, or the most time-consuming point of the first few days or weeks even um, to get used to the 3D environment. But apart from that, I think uh, we all pretty fast adapted. And yeah, I hand over to Raja and Kayla. I'd say very similar to Matthias, uh, just orienting your eyes. And as you come around a corner in the module, uh, it takes a while to be able to come around the corner in any direction and, and realize where you're at and instantly orient. And I think now, kind of going back to that point about the private astronauts, it's it's funny to watch them, you know, real relearn that process and always try to orient up and down, whereas we just kind of fly around corners in whatever orientation we have to be, and it just it just more naturally happens. And the brain's pretty amazing. Yeah, I think I have similar little things, but one thing that was kind of overwhelming for me when I first got up here about that 3D environment and how much equipment we have up here is there's just a lot of visual input, a lot of uh, cluttered views when you look around because of all the amazing scientific equipment and all of the equipment we have to keep us alive. But it took my brain a while to figure out how to filter that input, you know, what I needed to pay attention to and what I didn't. And so I think I spent a lot of time early on kind of taking in too much, uh, but now it's just second nature to all of us. And our next question comes from Andrea with Houston Chronicle. Hi, um, my question is along a similar line. You know, for, for three of you, this is your first time in space, and as Kayla said, you had your first space walk. And so I was just curious, how has the experience compared to your expectations, and what were your favorite moments so far, if, if all of you have a second to talk about that? Thanks. Well, I mean, it's like if I need to summarize like the highlights of this mission, definitely it's the launch, sitting on the rocket and being like, um, like accelerated uh, from zero to 28,000 kilometers per hour within a few seconds or minutes. Um, and then arriving here on the station, like opening the hatch, it felt like I know this station and obviously we all know it because we trained so long for it, but then it was completely new and then we had to discover it. So like uh, exploration inside the space station definitely uh, was also a highlight and then the spacewalk uh, it's entering again a completely new world stepping out of this fabulous station and being out there in space so these were definitely my three highlights and hopefully the landing will be the next I think for me, just the, the simple act of looking out the window is probably my, the, the highlight of up here. And that's something uh, I try to do every day, every night, and uh, whenever I have uh, the opportunity, because it's just something you really want to relish as much as you can. And so that, that for me, has been the highlight of, and far exceeded. Uh, I mean, I think I academically understood what it would be look, to look at the Earth. And you can look at it on a computer. You can look at uh, you know, the HD cams on the NASA feed of what it looks like. Uh, but to actually take that in with your eyes, uh, it's, pretty just, it's pretty overwhelming. 
I think for me, the most impactful thing has been the opportunity to work not only with our crew, but the amazing flight control teams all around the world. It's an incredibly fulfilling experience to be part of such a mission-driven organization who's accomplishing so much every single day. And when I look back on the things that we've had the honor and privilege to be a part of over the, over the last five months, it gives me goosebumps every time I think about it. And this crew is just really special. We, we all really love each other. And and we've had a, such a fabulous time up here. We, of course, missed Mark. Uh, we had five months up here with him as well uh, and just had a phenomenal time enjoying this experience together. And I'll just add in there, I uh, was a bit surprised to find out how emotional I got when I got to see my crewmates see space for the first time and watch them look out the windows uh, I suited them up for their first EVAs and how uh, protective I felt and how emotional it was to see them go out the hatch. I was um, had a hard time getting any work done. I was going window to window to watch them and make sure they were okay. Um, and of course they did a fabulous job. So uh, that's been a, a hugely fulfilling and wonderful experience to uh, have three crewmates. I mean, they've gone from being rookies and they inspire me every day now when we start the work day. They've, uh, we're acting like veterans in the first couple of weeks and that's been a huge, uh, hugely, hugely wonderful thing to witness. And our next question comes from Chelsea Goad with space.com. Hi, thank you so much for taking my question. Uh, my question is for the rookies on board who are no longer rookies. Um, how would you all feel about returning to station? Um, obviously I can assume, but would you all want to fly on a return mission to station? And if and when you return, what would you do differently, whether that's the food you request or the way that you schedule your time? Uh, how would you do things similarly or differently next time around? Well, um, plan my time differently. I think that's difficult because uh, we are all planned for by the ground. And so the ground um, decides what we are doing and what the activities are. But definitely I would study harder like uh, geography or our planet or the highlights. Now I've seen uh, the beauty of our planet Earth and uh, I want to learn so much more. I'm, I'm curious and uh, I also want to visit these places that I've seen from space here, um, like down on the planet. And so next flight, hopefully I prepare better study harder so that I just look out of the window I know exactly where I am currently I still need also support from the computer and the maps and so yeah that is my big um, goal for the next mission Yeah, I think for me it's uh, partially uh, a result of COVID, so I think naturally it may be a little bit better, uh, but we didn't get the opportunity to travel to a lot of the places and meet people in person. So I think for me, one of the, the missing pieces or one of the things I'm sad about, we, it's amazing science we get to do, but it'd be really even better if you got to meet the people you're talking to in person. And so we're making you know life-changing discoveries up here uh, on the behalf of the scientists and engineers who thought of these things, but we only get to hear them over the radio. And so we don't have, we didn't get a chance to meet them in person or at least not without masks odd over a zoom call or uh, teams call so I think in the future it'd be really good and even in post flight to go back and meet some of those teams and, and see the impacts of what that's doing so I think that would be what I do different next time I would absolutely love to come to the International Space Station again. I think it's been such an honor for us to be a part of this incredible engineering and scientific uh, vehicle that has been up here for 20 plus years. What an incredible legacy to be a part of. And so we've learned so much, not only individually, but from the history of the station, everything we've accomplished. So being a part of that has been really amazing. And I think for all of us, we would probably just take forward, hopefully, the lessons we learned in our first weeks and months here. You know, I think it, you feel a lot of pressure when you first get up here, trying to keep up with all the tasks. We have really busy schedules. And when you're doing something for the first time, it always takes longer and of course there's all the growing pains we've mentioned where you know I let go of this microphone and that's cool but if I look away for too long it's gonna disappear and now it's lost and I have to look for it all these little things like that that you have to get used to so I would hope that next time we're a little bit more prepared for some of those challenges and our next question comes from Gina Sinceri with ABC News uh, what's everyone looking forward to when you get home? A hot shower, a walk on the beach, a cold beer? What's up on your list?
Yes. Um, one thing that I've, in looking out the window, uh, that I miss a lot, I miss our, our planet. Uh, I miss being tucked up under the clouds and feeling the rain that's coming from above and feeling my uh, toes in the sand and the grass. So after I see my family, of course, and have, <clears throat> have a meal that I've been dreaming of, I'll probably go outside and just uh, feel the wind and uh, feel nature. And our next question comes from Stephen Clark with Space Flight Now. Thanks for taking my question. Stephen Clark from Space Flight Now. Um, I think my question is for uh, Tom Marshburn. Uh, how often do you get to go over to the, uh, the Russian segment of the space station? I know it's a big station, but how often do you actually get to go over to that, that part of the station and visit with the, uh, your Russian crewmates? And um, what's the, what's the dy dynamic like with everything going on uh, down on planet Earth? Yeah, actually, I mean, it's open traffic between the uh, the two uh, areas of the module, the Russian segment and the USOS. Um, so ev every day we go over there, and uh, we often have a, a meal, usually have a meal together uh, at least once on the weekend, maybe watch a movie together. Uh, and, of course, we have tasks that we uh, – they have an EVA coming up. We've been over to uh, uh, work with them on that as well. So um, it's been a very uh, collegial, very friendly um, uh, relationship together up here and we're working together you know we uh, rely on each other for our survival it is a dangerous environment and so um, we just go with our training we go with uh, recognizing that we are all up here for the same purpose to uh, explore and to keep this uh, space station maintained and to keep uh, performing the science on the uh, in our laboratories and so that is uh, all we focused on. So the dynamic hasn't changed. You know, we have about a 40-year history of working with the Russians, and that is all still very much in working and play here. And it's been a real pleasure, pleasure working with our colleagues. Our next question comes from Bill Harwood with CBS News. Yeah, I, I just wanted to follow up on uh, Gina's question. My earlier question, we heard from uh, Kayla and Tom about what they're looking forward to. How about Roger and Matias? Could you give us some sense of what you guys are looking forward to when you get back? Thanks. Yeah, I think uh, very similar in terms of the immediate things. You know, I, I can't wait to see my wife and kids. Uh, they'll hopefully get to meet us on the plane when we land. And so, yeah, giving them all hugs. Uh, I think, you know, I get goosebumps just thinking about actually that moment of getting to see them. I mean, just seeing the pictures of my kids, how much they've grown in six months uh, since they're younger. It's, it's pretty amazing and makes you realize how, how much you've missed. Uh, I think beyond beyond that, I think what I'm most looking forward to is getting back to work. I mean, there's a whole Artemis program going strong and, uh, you know, we should be seeing that first one launch shortly after we get back on the ground, and all of us are going to be doing different jobs with exploration, um, both you know maintaining this lab, but also uh, working on exploration and working on the Artemis program and all the elements for that. So there's a whole lot of testing, development, and building going on, and yeah, looking forward to getting our, our hands dirty in that. For me, it's the same. It's like I'm looking forward to uh, see my family and my friends again and just like being uh, with them, but also being outside, um, smelling planet Earth, because up here we are in a, lab, uh, in a laboratory. So basically the air here is always filtered and the smells are very limited. Um, so I'm looking forward to again to the richness of nature, to uh, yeah, also being exposed to the wind, the sun, jumping into water, uh, swimming. What I'm looking least forward to is gravity, <laughs> because I think like the first few days or maybe even the first few weeks, we need to learn again how to adapt to gravity. And so, uh, yeah, once this is over, probably I can enjoy again fully planet Earth. All right, that's all the time we have for today. Crew 3, we can't believe you're in the home stretch of your mission, and we're looking forward to having you back here on Earth. Thanks for all of you who tuned in and asked questions through our various platforms today. We'll see you next time. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to all participants. Station, we are now resuming normal operational audio communications.